Yes, fam, we are off from the Mekong Hotel on the way for a wonderful city tour. Tour guide has getting himself adjusted and he's ready. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hope you all had a good night's sleep. Yes. Okay. Well, today we'll have a city tour of Accra, the capital of Ghana. As usual, we are leaving our hotel, Mikli Hotel, located in the East Legon area of Accra. We're going to drive through some principal streets of Accra and I'll be pointing out some landmarks and other things to you as usual. If you have any questions that bothers your mind, please let me know or ask. And if I have the answers available right now, I will let you. And if not, I'll research and get back to you. Well, today is a typical Friday getting into the weekend in Accra. And Fridays are the busiest days within the city of Accra. Traffic is more intense than any other day because Ghanaian, the Ghanaian population is about 60 to 7, about 60 to 80 percent are Christians and therefore on Sundays it's very difficult for you to see shops and markets open and therefore it is better for you to do your shopping from Monday to Friday and Saturday. If you don't, then you have to wait till the next Monday. So Fridays are very, very tight. And today, Friday also marks the beginning of um, a lot of pe uh, families who have lost their loved ones uh, will be going to the morgue after three months or four months, keeping their loved ones in the morgue will be going for them. So we'll be seeing a lot of people wearing black or black and red or black and white depends on the family, the type of cloth the family chooses to wear for the funeral. So this are common things you're gonna see over the weekend or from today, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. You will see most of them. And when you go to the churches on Sunday, if you see a couple of people wearing white and black um, clothes, is because they are coming to thank God for seeing them through the, the funeral celebration of their loved one. So Accra became the capital of Ghana or the Gold Coast in 1877 when it was moved from uh, Cape Coast to here. It started as a small trading port in the uh, coastal area and then spread to what we're seeing today. And in 1898, it became municipality and therefore, um, and then gradually it extends to what we're seeing. So we have various districts and municipality making up the greater or Accra or the capital city of Ghana. This section of Accra or this suburb of Accra uh, is East Legon and directly facing us, this is a government office known as the Ghana Standard Authority. Now the Standard Board or the Standard Authority makes sure that every goods and services that are put up in the market follow the standards. So that's the Ghana Standard Authority. And more, this enclave is more of a government uh, agencies. We have the National Identification Authority in this area. We have the Food and Drugs Board in this area. We have the Food Research Institute of uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research also in this area. And then we are, so we have other government and the midwifery, nurses and midwifery um, Council also in this area. We have the West Africa Examination Council also in this area. So it's basically an enclave of government agencies and some private organization leading up to the University of Ghana Medical School or a sorry medical hospital where we have the University of Ghana uh, Hospital uh, also in that enclave. And so you can use the, that road 
all the way back to the university and go to uh, a place called Gimpa or Achimota Forest, the only forest reserve within the city of Accra. Now, Accra also experienced the lowest rainfall in the country, but you will not see that dryness of the city because in on its southern zone and eastern zone there are lagoons that keep the atmosphere moist and uh, dry so you not see that dryness within the we have then joined one of the major roads within the city of Accra and that leading to Tetequashi interchange or Tetequashi roundabout before it used to be the biggest runabout in West Africa. When you circle it, it's one kilometer. And the interchange has cut the distance. But still, when you go around it, it will be one kilometer named after Tetequashi, the founder of Ghana's Coco. We are gradually leaving the East Legon area, getting into the airport residential area. The airport residential area, just like East Legon, is a residential area for the rich, the super rich, and other government officials and uh, ambassadors from other countries live in those areas of Accra. Now, this area, acquiring property or renting, very, very expensive. All this areas are quoted in US dollars but payable in the Ghanaian currency city at the prevalent exchange rate. Um, the former president or the second president of Ghana after the Ford introduction of the Ford Republic lives in this area and that is President J. A. Kufo, his house is just in front of the Villaggio building where he resides. Now the, the airport residential area take its name from the airport as you see and you pass through the Kotoka International Airport and that's the name of the airport in Ghana or the international airport in Ghana. Now the name Kotoka is the name of an army general in the Ghana Armed Forces who led the overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah in 1966. One may ask if you abhor uh, there's a debate going on that we need to change the name from Kotoka to Accra International because it used to be Accra International Airport before. Oh, oh we could just call it Kwame Nkrumah International <laughs> Airport. I think that would be the solution. <laughs> but um, um, so there's a debate going on that the name needs to be changed because it's glorifying uh, a cool yeah. maker and all that. So, uh, well. That's a, good, uh, that's, a good, that's a good debate, serious. It, yeah, it so is. it's been going on over the years, but still, the government, no government has decided to change the name yet. And before the rehabilitation of the airport, his statue was in front of the arrival hall. But when they decided to uh, rehabilitate the airport, not where you pass through, where you pass through was just a newest part of the airport. But the old one, which is now the domestic terminal, that is where the statue used to stand but it was pulled down and it's not returned. And I think the people who are for the change of the name are praying that they don't send it back there. Yeah. So, uh, but so what come. A, this person, Kotaka Army General, what did he do for the country after the overthrow? That's the part that we never really hear about, you know? Well, unfortunately, when he led the overthrow of uh, Kwame Nkrumah's government, he did not actually rule. He was also killed. See? Wow, so yes. that, that's a Kill story that we never at know. the airport. <laughs> uh, how did this all happen? Yeah, so after his overthrow, he did not really enjoy. So another person took over, General Ankara, and all that took over, and then it went on and on. So he did, he was the figure, but he didn't enjoy the overthrow. So he led the overthrow, but he did not actually 
um, enjoy that. And that's his name right there, family. For yes. Those know, Kotoka. Kotoka. He, and he hails from the Volta region of Ghana. Yeah, that is an interesting story. Usually the person will overthrow and take over the country, usually lead as president. Yeah, but he did not really. So what kind of things that, did they see at that time where they felt like Kwame Nkrumah was what? need to be overthrown? Because that's <laughs> also another part of the story that you know you don't really yes. hear about. Okay, and Dr. Kwame Nkrumah actually was not part of the first political party to be established in Ghana in 1948. He was spotted by Dr. Akwajei when met him in London while he was president of the Black Assembly or gathering them and he realized that if you are doing this in the UK, why don't you, we need somebody to come and galvanize our party and make sure uh, we, we achieve our aim. So he recommended him to the United Gold Coast Convention and Dr. Pagrant, who was then the leader or the financier of the party, decided to pay the airfare and everything for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah to return in, to Ghana in August 1948 to become the General Secretary of the Convention of the United Gold Coast um, Convention. Unfortunately, when he joined, he realized that the leaders at the time were not really, really uh, interested in getting independent now, but the Amoto was independent gradually. So he realized that, no, I need to. So he broke away from the United Gold Coast Convention and formed his own party, the Convention People's Party, which he launched as Sopon at the, follow, the following year. Hello. And from then, he Hello. began to galvanize and then um, bring everybody along, the market women, you know, the elite, everybody, farmers, and the cocoa farmers, the market people. women, yeah. everybody, ordinary Ghanaian, everybody on board, and he started fighting. Dominic, but Dominic. what actually, he became the pivotal... Yeah, I don't know if you're close to phone He became the pivotal leader of. Manchester Dominic and Amber, no, after no. What do you need, Mohobi? Why? Of the struggle for independence. So when he led the independent to gain Ghana's independence on the 6th of March 1957, the people think that what rightly fully belonged to them he has taken it from them and so therefore uh, but he realized also that the independence of ghana was meaningless unless it is linked with the total liberation of the african continent so he started galvanizing other um leaders at the time to come together and do what is right so they see his vision and up to now i would say that kwame nkrumah was ahead of his age of his peers at the time so they did not understand him because just recently they launched the africa free trade um after zone and which he was advocating long ago he was advocating for africa high command the army to have one army one currency and all that and bringing Africa as one United States of Africa. So with all this, the, the West was not comfortable with his ideology and all that. So after several years of his overthrow, it has been found out that it is not Kotoka and the Ghana Police Service and the Ghana Armed Forces that actually overthrew Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, but it was orchestrated by the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States mm -hmm. to overthrow uh, his regime. Mm -hmm. And so they demonize Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and all that. But if Kwame Nkrumah would have had 20 years of ruling Ghana, you know I've seen Ghana in the state. Mm -hmm. You see it differently because when after he's from 60, from 1st July 1960 when he became the true president because when he became 
uh, Ghana became independent after three years before we, the sovereignty was totally granted. That was 1st July 1960. And from 1960 to 66, he was able to put together the motorway, which is also by far the best road in Ghana in terms of quality, in terms of construction. He put up the shoe factories, he put up the glass factories, he put up the sugar factories, he he actually established the Ghana Industrial Holding Company, which comprises a whole lot. Now, when you also see moving pick, we're going to see a golden tulip. We're going to see a golden tulip in Kumasi, Atlantic Hotel in Takradi, Star Hotel, which is no more. All those hotels were put up by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and they are all been sold now. So Moving Peak used to be a state hotel. Golden Tulip used to be a state hotel. So he has built a whole lot. And until 1992, 95, 96, into the 2000s, the Akosombo Dam was serving Ghana with energy throughout that we even export some to Togo and have an exchange program with Ivory Coast but people did not add until we begin to experience what we call shortage of supply because the Volta Dam or the Kosovo Dam solely depends on the rainfall and the change in climatic conditions making it difficult for what the rainfall so it's not getting enough uh, water into the reservoir to generate the electricity which was giving us power and so it was wholly in the, that time they realized that no we need to add addition that came by when we put out the thermal plant in Abuadze in Takrade during the Rollins regime and all that so he's a man of vision, a vision that they demonize so bad that to the extent that when he was overthrown, his statue that was standing in front of the old parliament house in Accra was pulled down and he said taking off his arm and everything and the regime that took over at the time make it illegal to belong to the CPP and also you don't even have to have Nkrumah's photo and Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was the only head of state that have ruled two different countries that is Ghana and Guinea because he was able to bring Ghana, Guinea, Mali together as one union and so when he was overthrown because he was on his way to Vietnam to settle the Vietnam American War when he made a stop over in China when he heard that his government was overthrown. He was not able to come back to Ghana and so he went into exile in Guinea and he was made a co-president by Secretary and there and then he unfortunately got sick of prostate cancer, went to Romania for treatment and then he died. And he was returned, not to Ghana, but the first state burial was given to him in Guinea Conakry. And when there was a change of government, his body was allowed to come back, but was taken to his native village called Nkrofo in the Western region. And then until 1992, 93, and the that uh, the late president, Fire Left General Rollins, decided to rehabilitate his image and put him at the proper place where he's laid. Now, we'll be going there at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park. And that very park is not only chosen because they want to lay him there. They laid him there because that is where he stood to declare Ghana independent. And that very small tract of land is also a historical part of Ghana because during the colonial era that very portion no black man is allowed no Ghanaian is allowed to enter that small tract of land 
because it was the polo ground for the British. And you only enter there when you are a cardboard or you are a servant there. So when the time reached for Ghana's independence, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah decided that I want to hear and all Ghanaians come and have a feel of this land that people are not allowed to come in. So that's how come we decide to bury him there and we'll talk about it more when we get in the So that is the African star. Oh, perfect, excellent. And that is why he was voted the African man of the millennium by the British Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> and, and, and I think also his type of presidency will never be taken again in Ghana.